So with the recent massive delay, well, couple of massive delays, really, all things considered and combined for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we got the update on Spider-Man 3 and the brand new release date. Now, of course, you look at that release date and you realize that Marvel Studios and Disney decided to delay their film another significant amount to give Sony breathing room. This point to the new actual partnership between the two and how things are better than they've ever been before between the two studios. And this ties into something I talked about recently, but we'll talk about it right here as well and elaborate a little bit more. So let's get into it. So as most of you can see right now, the new MCU slate has Spider-Man 3 on November 5th of 2021 and Doctor Strange 2 on March 25th of 2022. Thus, Marvel Studios and Disney had to do another big delay to Doctor Strange, which of course they've been trying to get this movie on track for about a year and a half now. So again, it's one of these things that just keeps on getting delayed. And the big takeaway from this one is, is the fact that Spider-Man ended up bumping right in there and taking its date. Now, I've seen people talk about this and there's been a lot of speculation. And I'm here to say that Sony did not intentionally drop their film there. They did not do this on purpose. This wasn't like a tactical power move or anything to, you know, um, like distract everybody or somehow attack Marvel Studios or something that people are talking about. This was a joint effort because the moment Sony announced that they were dropping the film there, it took literally minutes and Marvel Studios Disney announced, oh, we're moving a couple of our movies to accommodate Spider-Man. Now, of course, this goes all the way back to the original Spider-Man deal when Spider-Man was announced to be joining the MCU they shifted the entire phase around, moving films all over the place to accommodate for this. This has happened again, this time happening with Spider-Man 3. Now, obviously, Sony had to assess the situation. They had to look at how their productions were going to go and what they were going to do. And as I said a couple of days ago, um, you know, I made an extensive video on it talking about the fact that right now, Spider-Man 3 had to get delayed. And I was saying that because it had to. There was no feasible scenario where Spider-Man 3 was going to come out on time considering there's other commitments that just got bumped back. So looking at it now, it kind of makes sense when you really think about it and when you go as to what I was saying. Now, I also made a video that was probably kind of 9 or 10 minutes, 12 minutes, I don't know. I'll have it pop up up on the thing above. You guys can go watch it and where I really go in depth on it. But I talked about how right now, Spider-Man's future in the MCU is guaranteed. And I think this announcement between the two studios back-to-back -back announcing their new release dates confirms everything I said in that video, like verbatim almost. So think about it this way. We recently just found out that Sony canceled the Silver and Black movie. You know, Silver, Sable, and Black Cat, which was in development as a standalone spin-off film. And since that time, they've announced that, hey, yeah, we're sort of in the MCU. Look at these connected pieces, right? Look at Morbius and Morbius characters that are from the MCU, like Vulture and Tom Holland's going to be in upcoming Venom films. But there's connective pieces there, right? And now Disney has some sort of financial stake into all Spider-Man films. So again, you start thinking about that. And then we just talked about it, you know, recently, um, the silver and black, the thing that was scrapped, that is on a different trajectory now because the former director of that said they're thinking about developing that as two separate series for Disney+. Plus. So Sony properties on Disney, on Disney+, Plus, with Marvel Studios at hand. So again you're seeing this working relationship between the two. The two are working closer together. And we know last year, Sony was like, oh yeah, if the opportunity presents itself, we would love to put our stuff on Disney+. Plus. That would, uh, that would be great, and we're going to shop it around to different networks. What Sony doesn't want is a Black Cat series on Amazon or a Silver Sable series on AMC. And they don't want that because then they have no hand in it. They have no control. And Sony loses a certain amount of control. And then the rights holders and all this. It would essentially be the Netflix deal with Marvel. Except Disney would be further away from these characters than ever before. 
So again, they don't want that. So this brings us back around to what's happening with Doctor Strange, what's happening with Spider-Man. Marvel Studios and Sony clearly sat down and they discussed this and they discussed this at length. And they discussed this because they realized this had to happen. When, and when Sony looked at Tom Holland's schedule and decided, well, we have to shoot Uncharted. Okay, what can we do to accommodate you? And the obvious choice was to accommodate you, we need to bump our movie back a handful of months again, start production later. But also Spider-Man 3 now, you're open to work on that in this time and here's your new release date. Now what's important about that November release date is that typically many people are already associating that with Doctor Strange. And again, the way they actually pulled the new release schedule and where they put Doctor Strange, now Marvel Studios films are stepping on Marvel Studios films. So, you know, you're getting six weeks between releases now and the first half is so front loaded that Disney is willing to sacrifice some of their box office and some of their Disney, you know, output and Fox output to accommodate for Sony. Because again, they have a stake. They have a financial reasoning to do it. And they're working with Sony on this. So when Sony came out and announced that day, you know, I, I was scratching my head at first. I'm like, wait a second. When I realized it was Doctor Strange, it all kind of clicked because what I said, what I was saying before. And now let's bring the other major factor into this, which many people believe that uh, might have had something to do with this. And that's Sam Raimi. Now, most people know, most of you should know, in case you don't, I'll quickly catch you up. Sam Raimi directed the first three Spider-Man films for Sony. He also happens to be friends with Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige was allowed to kind of, um, be on set and try to, uh, you know, do executive producer stuff, but also look at the situation and give his advice and all that. And that's how he got his start in Hollywood was with Spider-Man and of course, you know, the X-Men films. And he's been wanting Sam Raimi for a while. Sam Raimi has wanted to work with Marvel Studios for a while. So is it possible, as many people are saying and are pointing towards it, that Sam Raimi, with his working relationship with Sony, which he has, and his good relationship with Amy Pascal and Abby Arad, has also sat down with them and went, well, Spider-Man, right? Um, We know what you guys are trying to do. There's been discussions. I'll bump my film back, but let's work this together. And if you think about how they talked about Spider-Man and Kevin Feige, how he talked about it, how he would go into and go, well, here's the thing. Spider-Man can exist in a multiverse. He's one of the characters that, you know, doesn't travel through different universes, but the nature of the Spider-Verse opens him up to that. Isn't it just coincidental that you're getting the third Spider-Man film and then just a handful of months later, you're getting Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness directed by somebody that directed Spider-Man. Again, it's co it could be coincidental, but again, there's got to be something more to it, right? We can't all be reading between these lines. We can't all just be reaching the same conclusion and looking at it. And certainly there's been plenty of teases out there. Now, again, if let's say Spider-Man is leaving our universe to go join the Venomverse. Okay. But then how do they connect Morbius and all this considering that looks like it takes place in the proper MCU considering Spider-Man's wanted for murder. You got the vulture, the prison and all of that. So again, there's a lot of questions being asked here. And I'm going to guess that the two are working much closer together than we thought. And that the two are going to work out something. And we're going to see Spider-Man multiversing. We're going to see all those, you know, oh my god, imagine if that happened. Because Sam Raimi and Kevin Feige and Sony will have to do this. Because of financial stakes now. And I've talked about it before. Sony is the biggest studio in trouble now. I talk about it in the other Spider-Man videos. I break it down in great lengths. So you guys really should watch those if you haven't. Where I say Sony is the studio that's the worst off. Because they have nothing. So working with Disney, having this working partnership where they're both friends and helping one another is the only course of action. So Doctor Strange 2, the new release date, the accommodation for Sony, it's all pointing towards the fact that they're working together more than ever before. And that's a good sign for everybody.